Community health concerns are growing here in the U.S. That's right. In places like Los Angeles, COVID-19 cases and hospitalizations are on the rise, but COVID isn't the only concern. Over the weekend, the World Health Organization declared monkeypox an international health emergency. Los Angeles health officials say if they don't see a big enough decline of COVID-19 hospitalizations by this Thursday, mask mandates will be back in place. And now that monkeypox is considered an international public health emergency, the WHO is urging countries to ramp up their responses among high-risk communities. Joining us now is Dr. Jerry Abraham. He is the director of vaccine programs at Kendron Health in Los Angeles. Dr. Abraham, thanks for joining us. As we Thank you for having me. As we work to live with COVID, what should people know about masking at this stage, especially in California where you are? I think we're still waiting to see what happens. There's some good news yesterday that we're starting to see the numbers flatten out, but will they increase over the next few days as we look at those moving seven day averages? And that's really been the concern that we've been in this high tier now going on for almost two weeks. And so for us, that's the trigger that would set us off with a mask mandate. But as we know, highly controversial, people have concerns about the economic impacts of a mask mandate. Uh, we also don't want to um, in like any uh, frenzy, if you will, around these numbers. And so I have a feeling you may see strong recommendations, but whether we'll definitely get a mandate on Thursday or Friday is yet to be seen. And Dr. Abraham, uh, now, of course, we have to deal with monkeypox as well as COVID. Uh, so I want to ask you a little bit about that. Uh, since monkeypox can be spread by skin to skin contact or even from droplets from face to face contact, and even in some cases by infected bedding, how do you recommend people best protect themselves? Yeah, well, starting uh, Saturday, actually, I've been offering the monkeypox, and it's actually monkeypox and smallpox vaccine to people with the highest risk. And so that's really what we need to do the sense of urgency, just like we did with the COVID-19 rollout. You know, I'm a champion for vaccine equity, and that's exactly what we're going to do with the uh, monkeypox vaccine is make sure that people have access to the monkeypox vaccine, especially those that are most at risk. Uh, right now, we're talking about men who have sex with men, maybe going to larger gatherings, uh, depending on some of your risk factors, sexual practices, you may be at higher risk. But this is by no means a gay disease, and we definitely want to make sure that's clear that we're not stigmatized this as just an LGBTQ issue. We know there are children now that have been infected in the United States. And traditionally, this is a pediatric infectious illness. We really want everyone to keep their guard up. It really is a skin to skin contact and respiratory droplets issue, not a sexually transmitted infection. And so mm -hmm. I really want people to understand that we're all touching our loved ones. We come into contact, our children play with other people and touch one another. And so really everyone can be susceptible and we want to watch those numbers carefully because once we cross that point of no return, we're going to really want to ramp up some of our strategies. So if we can get ahead of it now and really contain and control the spread of monkeypox disease, then we really have a shot of making this go away quickly. Do you think there's enough information getting out there to local clinics and stuff about how this uh, strain of monkeypox often presents itself? Because I have heard cases of patients who say their, their monkeypox was misdiagnosed initially because it is presenting itself in some cases as a sexually transmitted disease, even though, as you pointed out, it is not. Right. And this is the same challenge we've had with COVID-19. I still find clinicians and patients that don't realize they have access to Paxlovid and look at Biden and look at Fauci, who have had really successful experiences with COVID-19 and ending their illness because they take antivirals. It's the same thing with monkeypox. Even clinicians and patients don't realize it is spreading in our community. Who is at risk? Where you go when you start having these lesions or pain or start feeling ill? And so that's definitely a challenge that we have? How do we educate and inform all of our clinicians to be able to identify uh, and, and really treat, uh, diagnose these illnesses that emerge? And this is not going to be the last one as we continue to deal with climate crisis yeah. and these fires. You're probably going to see more of these types of infectious illnesses that mm -hmm. present. And what's interesting here is monkeypox is presenting in a different distribution than historically we've yeah. seen where it was face and trunks of children. Now we're seeing genitals and, you know, um, perianal areas mm -hmm. of adults particularly yeah. men who have sex with men. So it is always alarming that, you know, we have to have our guard up and that's why public health is so important. But it's good to know and you're doing your part educating the public. Thank you so much, Dr. Jerry Abraham, for all of that. We appreciate it. Thank you.